What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be installing this bride bucket seat into the hard body. Some of you know, some of you don't know, but I did take the truck to Adams Motorsport Park. It's a little go-kart track that they let cars go on to drift. And I took it just to kind of get a feel for what the truck does at the track and what the track is like. And this weird thing happened where I only got to do three runs. And those three runs, I spun out automatically because I was in second um, and I noticed that I was just flying around inside the truck like I couldn't even control the truck because I was just trying to hold on to the steering wheel and when I was trying to hold on I was just kind of like hitting full lock and just kind of losing control so that's why we're gonna be installing the bucket seat the bucket seat does help a lot because in my 240 I used to just sit in the car like I would just sit in the car and I'd be able to slide it back and forth and manji down the street and do everything perfect Again, it is a 240 and this is a truck, so it's a little bit harder to drift. But I would just sit in my place and I would not get tossed around because I was, you know, in my place with the bucket seat. This is the same exact bucket seat that I had in that car. Uh, but when I sold it, I took it out because it's just, in my opinion, it's the perfect seat. It's a bright low max, so you sit really low. And I'm just a fan of sitting really low in cars. I don't know why. I just, I like the way it feels. So that's why I took it out. And I'm going to be putting it into the truck. Hopefully that should help me uh, kind of stay in my place and have a little bit more control of the truck. So when I bought my 240, I bought this seat. And I threw it in almost automatically like a day or two after I purchased the 240. And in my opinion at least, this is like the perfect seat all around. One, because I daily the car. And this is the seat that I dailyed with it. And it was just super comfortable. My car was super stiff. And this seat was still super comfortable never gave me any back aches never gave me any problems at all whatsoever the only problem that this seat has is that a little faded right here but that's because i didn't have tinted windows and it just sat in front of my house and this side just got baked but other than that perfect seat now one thing you guys want to measure is from the center right here at the bottom up to these holes right here because these are for your harnesses some of you aren't going to be running harnesses some of you are but it's still recommended that your shoulder should be right around this area. Not not like taller and not all the way down here. So when you're going to buy one, just measure that and obviously measure your waist. So this for me is a perfect seat because it's a 32 waist and I forgot how tall it is. But it's perfect right here. The shoulders hug me in. It has deep, uh, I don't even know what you call it, deep sides. So you sit in there pretty deep. Like I said, it's comfortable and it hugs you really nice. In the past, I've seen people running these like huge seats. And when they sit in there, they have like two inches of gap over here and two inches of gap. And they're like all the way down here. Like, I mean, if, if that's what you like, then go for it. But if you're going for safety, go with something that actually fits you. Because if you, if you have like this much gap on each side, you're just going to be flying around. It's going to be the same story. So just make sure that you get a seat that's your size. Now, as far as the seat rails, I'm going to be using these no-name seat rails that I got a long time from my buddy Matt. And... They have seat rails for a 240. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is the same exact thing that he did on here. I'm just gonna cut this off, get the seat bracket, which is what I need, bolt that up to my seat, and then get my stock seat rails from the driver's side of the truck, and then weld them on, and then throw them back on. So the main reason I'm gonna be using these seat rails is just so I can have the ability to move my seat back and forth. Not that anyone else is gonna be driving my truck, but if I ever do cage a truck, it might make it a bit easier. And two, it makes it a lot harder when you're trying to sit in the truck and someone's sitting here measuring for you uh, to know where to move it. And you have to get out super carefully so you can weld it in its place and make sure that it's where you like it. Because if you take it out of the car, you weld it, you put it in, you're not going to be able to move it. So that way like this, you can move it forward and back. But there is going to be a little bit of a difference. Since this is a factory seat, it sits a lot higher so your feet get to like arch down like this so since it's going to sit a lot lower i'm gonna to have to scoot the seat back meaning my seat is going to sit like brackets are going to sit here but my seat's going to sit back here so my legs can be more straight and i have more room all in here and which is going to be good for me because i like to sit far back but the steering wheel might not reach my hands anymore but I have a deep dish steering wheel that I'm probably going to be throwing on. So that doesn't matter. But I'm just giving you a heads up in case some of you are wanting to do the same exact thing. I wasn't going to do this today. But I figured I'd get a head start for tomorrow. So as soon as I wake up, I just have everything done. And then start doing it. So 
this video might take two days to make I'm not too sure but another thing is I want to throw this seat in before I throw my hydro in because I do really need a hydro I already have my hydro and everything so that's gonna be a video on that and the hydro is gonna be somewhere probably right here but I might have to remove the little shifter and maybe since the seat's gonna be a little bit thinner and farther back um, I'm going to have more space in there. So that's why I want to put the bucket seat in first and not the hydro. But if you guys want to see a hydro install on a hard body, definitely subscribe so you can see. And I'll show you guys right now how to install a bucket seat. In order to remove the seat, there's going to be four 12 millimeter bolts. One right there. One right there. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but right in the center of the screen. Right there. One right there, and one right there. Once you've got the seat out, in order to get the seat rails out, it's four 12 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here, and then there's one back here, one back right about there. But in order to get those, you have to pull this little lever and Pull this forward in order to access those two and then they should pop right off. So I got the two seat brackets right here. They're all cut off. Uh, now I'm just going to get the flat wheel right there, 80 grit. And I'm just going to clean it off right here because you can see it has some metal still on there. It's probably not going to focus, but... Alright, well it's not going to focus. But I'm just going to clean all this off just so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to just uh, see if I can just sit them on the other brackets. These are the old 240 brackets. Uh, see how I'm going to do it. Well, I'm just going to sit them like that and weld them straight to it. Or drill a hole and bolt it up. I'm not too sure yet. I have the seat brackets all shaved down right here, ready to go. Uh, like I said, I just use a flap disc. Everything is nice and cleaned off. It doesn't look very smooth because um, when you're using a flap disc, you like kind of go back and forth and it leaves like a little, like, I don't know, it just looks weird, but it's flat. Take my word for it, it's really flat. Um, but yeah, now all I gotta do is just paint these, but I'm not gonna paint them until after I weld them and figure how to do all that because I'm probably gonna sand the whole bottom down um, just so I can get a nice good weld in there because these are what are gonna be saving my life in a sense because you know these are like safety so that's what I'm gonna do and then once I have them welded onto the brackets I'm gonna do all that tomorrow uh, but for you guys it'll be one second but once I get that all welded then I could uh, paint them I'm probably gonna paint them black again um, just to kind of make it subtle but who knows, knowing me, I might do something wild. So I think I have an idea of how I'm gonna mount it, or at least where I'm gonna mount it, because this is a pretty good spot. Um, the way I had it before, it was hitting right here, and now there's clearance right here. Nothing's welded yet. Um, it's, you know, it's straight right here. Like, it just, it's a good position. My hands reach perfect. Um, I am a little far from the clutch pedal. I could still drive it like this, I'm pretty sure. But I'd rather be a little closer just so I could give it the clutch kicks that I need and stuff like that. The shifter feels like in the right position. Um, I don't have my hydro in there yet, but it feels like it'd be in the right position. Um, height feels okay. I want to go a little lower, but I still have some more adjustment. Barely any, but I still have some. But I think um, this is what I'm going to be using is a uh, rusty, I don't even know what you call this, like box steel. Or just a square piece of metal that's long. And I know it looks really rusty and kind of like... Eh, it's rusty like do you really want to weld that there, but it's not it's pretty thick and it's like mostly just like surface rust I already tried it on a piece with the flap disc and got it all cleaned off and it actually I actually think it'll work, you know good I just got to get rid of all this rust just so it'll penetrate good But the reason I have this plate here is because on this side I don't know if you guys knew this but on hard bodies that side is a lot taller than this side. I didn't know that so these this seat rail goes up like this and then it goes down and on the other one it's a lot higher and it just kind of stays flat this one goes like at an angle um, so I don't know how well you guys can see so when I put the seat on top of the factory rails I'll show you guys what I did right now 
the seat was sitting like that, like facing this way, like tilted. And I measured, I put a piece of wood in there and it was about an, an inch and three quarters, which is just about what this is. This is a little bit bigger, but I put this in there just for now and it seems to be right in the perfect position. So I'm gonna clean this off real quick, tack weld it, and then I'll show you guys, I guess I'll just take this off right now and show you guys what I did to the original seat rails. All right guys, so these are the factory seat rails. Um, this one's a little stiffer, but all I did is shave everything off that was on here, like all the little mechanisms to latch into these little grooves um, for like the, the factory system. And then over here, I did the same thing. I shaved and cut everything off. There's a little bit of rust on there. Um, I just have this just holding it. But uh, so you guys can see that once I shaved all that off, they're just kind of loosely in there. So what I'm gonna have to do is tack everything on, see how I like the seat, and either move it, move them both back equally, or move them forward how I want, and then weld them in its place. So I think I'm gonna weld it from inside of here, just so it doesn't move and probably yeah down here all of this i'm gonna weld all this shut but the baseline that i'm going with right now is at the end of these two little like brackets i'm gonna weld it right there so it's like flush and then same over here it's almost right there in its place and that's pretty much how i'm getting like the the basics of where it's going to be mounted and once i mount it i can move them both back or forward however i want but this is just what's going to give me the extra girth to match that angle over there. That still has an angle, but this one, you guys can't really see it. It's a lot further down. Yeah, the camera, you guys probably can't even see it, but this will just give me the girth just to like make the seat kind of go straight. I got three little tacks on there. For those of you who don't know what tacks are, it's just like a little weld just to hold everything together. But at the same time, if something's incorrect, you could easily uh, knock that off, knock that off, and knock that off. Uh, rather than fully welding this all around and you find out that it's not the size you want or you want to change it up. So that's why it's always good to do little tack welds and then, you know, sit in it or whatever, whatever you're doing. Just tack weld it uh, sturdy enough to where it won't break, but not too sturdy where you can't take it off and you have to just recut everything up. So I was going to tack this up right now, but uh, it's not fully shaved right here, bare metal under this bracket. So that's why this is just kind of on there so i'm going to take this off right now and then get everything down here under here to bare metal and probably get this down here to bare metal a little bit more than what it already is it's pretty much bare metal but uh just grind a little bit more away and you can see right here with the sharpie i drew lines to make sure that my seat was uh once i take it off i could put it back to where it was you can see over here i drew a little line around this little border piece right here those lines right there should match up once i get everything on there and then i also measured but i also drew lines on this side and that side but i did measure uh half an inch from this to this little bracket piece right there same with here half inch half inch right here and then same with the other side half inch from this to the outside of this just little things like that i measured everything down i measured everything and wrote it down um so now i could take the seat off and now i should be able to put it back on to exactly where i wanted to but i'm just showing you guys right now that i'm doing tax i did shade all this down to bare metal this is bare metal so this is ready to weld pretty much but I, like i said i want to do tack weld on everything just so i know it's gonna you know be good so i just got the seat all grinded down here now i can uh lay some tack welds in here just so that'll hold so i could sit in it and then possibly just drive it down the driveway just to get a feel for it um but it's perfect, it's straight facing that way. It's not like pointing that way, pointing that way. Um, it's not like this, like that, it's straight. Uh, so everything seems about right, right here. And my door doesn't really close because it's crashed. But right there you can see I have uh, plenty of space right here in between. Uh, I don't know if you would call this the B pillar or not. I know it's a B pillar on a car, but I don't know if it's a B pillar on a truck. But whatever, right here, uh, you can see that I have space right there. I have tons of room down here um, for the roll cage that I'm going to be doing. So most of you don't know, but that's why I got rid of all my interior is because I'm going to be doing a roll cage. And I got plenty of space right here for the door bars because they're going to go right through here. Which, this is already to be begin with a lot of room. And I'm still going to cut into the door for the roll cage to go into here. So I have plenty of space. Um, now I just got to tack that in place. And then go drive it around, see how I like the position of it, see if I want to lower it some more or raise it up some more. I probably want to go low because I like sitting really low. 
All right guys, so I was editing the video right now and I just uh, realized that I had no outro. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys what the seat looks like and the brackets. Uh, I gotta go to school right now, so I'm gonna try to make this really quick. So I still haven't painted it, but uh, I think I'm just gonna weld on top of all these welds because you can see, uh, I don't know if I showed you guys. Yeah, I didn't show you guys. Uh, those are my Harbor Freight welds. Yes, I know I suck at welding, but uh, I'm trying to practice little by little. So this is like, I think, a perfect opportunity. Yes, it is a seat bracket. Oh my God, it's gonna save your life. But at the end of the day, uh, these are the stock ones, so they're kind of really like wobbly. Like, well, everything's suit. Like all these welds, I welded the inside and the outside. So all that is cherry. Now, uh, the weak part in here is just this little bracket right here. So I think I'm just gonna weld this up around and see if that stiffens it up. And then if that doesn't, then uh, I'm gonna have to figure something else out. But uh, the truck, I've already driven it, it's perfect, everything's perfect. Uh, like I said, now I just need to weld some more on top of here. Probably get to flap this, grind all this, make it all like one, look like one piece, and then probably just paint it, finish welding a little bit right here. But, yeah, I welded both of the outsides right here, both of the insides, I welded the seat brackets back here so they wouldn't move. I welded little spots weld down here, you guys can barely see them, and I did the same on the other side. So that is how I installed the bucket seat in my truck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I found it useful. Some of you guys can maybe install buckets in your mini truck. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.